so uh, very good morning to all of you so in today's tutorial uh, we will uh, do some uh, frequency domain analysis of rlc circuit so we have done the uh, theory about rlc circuit series and parallel and uh, today we will take on some uh, problems in this uh, domain okay uh, so the first problem is uh, for a series uh, uh, lr circuit is shown out here uh, we need to find out the inductive reactance xl uh, the total impedance z and the total current which is going to flow in the circuit i and the uh, voltage drop across the resistance as well as the uh, inductor uh, the power factor uh, also and the uh, theta angle which is the angle uh, phase uh, difference between the current and the uh, applied voltage out here right okay and the true power reactive power and apparent power so these are the things we need to uh, compute in the given circuit so in the uh, given circuit the value of uh, l is given as uh, 40 uh, milli henry uh, the value of uh, resistance is given as an uh, 20 ohms uh, and the uh, voltage is given as 120 volt and uh, 60 hertz so uh, these are all uh, straightforward questions uh, so this is the data which is available to us uh, total voltage is available uh, uh, the inductance value is available resistance value is available and uh, we can also write the uh, uh, phase angle of the uh, current which will uh, flow in the uh, resistance uh, the difference between the voltage across the resistance and the current will be zero that we know and the difference between the uh, uh, voltage and current in the inductor is 90 degrees so rest of the data we need to uh, compute uh, so to start with um, if to find out what is the uh, impedance of the inductor so we know it's a formula given by l omega uh, or in this case uh, uh, instead of omega the frequency is given in a 60 hertz so it becomes a 2 pi f l so if we uh, substitute these values we get an xls 15.1 uh, out here so that is uh, written out here okay uh, so uh, and then uh, this is uh, resistance it remains as such okay it, it, in, in ohms that is the value because that is uh, nothing to do with the frequency it's not a uh, frequency dependent component so that remains uh, uh, 20 ohm that uh, impedance offered by the resistance uh, irrespective of frequency of operation so the total impedance okay again the total impedance is uh, specific to one particular frequency uh, 60 hertz so that we can compute uh, by using this formula root of r square plus xl square so you get uh, 25.1 that is the total uh, impedance so once the total impedance is known uh, we can find out the uh, total uh, current also uh, so the total current will be the total voltage divided by the uh, total uh, impedance okay so if you divide so you get a uh, 4.78 and that is the current which is going to uh, flow in uh, on both these uh, 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 elements okay uh, now uh, the only thing which we need to understand out here is this 4.78 ampere which is uh, flowing in this circuit uh, that will be in phase with the voltage across resistance and it will be out of phase the voltage across this inductor will be uh, uh, leading this current by 90 degree uh, and the and this voltage 120 which we have initially applied and that and the current and they will be uh, and in not in uh, sync with each other so there will be some phase lag which we need to uh, compute okay so uh, so if, uh, for that we can use this formula uh, cos theta r by z so that will uh, r by r is this uh, 20 and uh, uh, this is the uh, impedance total impedance offered by, by r and l uh, that is at this 25.1 so if you put that values out here r uh, 25.1 you get the uh, uh, no, uh, angle theta okay uh, what is this theta this is the uh, uh, angle by which the uh, current is lagging the applied voltage okay so uh, this is the angle um, the in which the total current is lagging uh, no, with respect to the uh, applied voltage 120 volt so that is 31.7 okay now uh, power factor is uh, cos theta again uh, no, the, that comes out to be a point in a 797 okay uh, now uh, having done that now uh, we can find out what are the voltages across the uh, resistance and inductor so the resistance is in a uh, uh, i into r because the i is same out here it is in a series connection so i into r 
and similarly voltage across uh, inductor will be uh, uh, 72.2 if you see these two voltages will be uh, out of phase by uh, 90 degree and if you uh, take an, uh, an um, vector sum of these two so root of 72.1 square and a, uh, uh, plus 95.6 square so you will get 120 okay so the the vector sum of these two will give you the uh, total applied voltage also uh, and uh, what about uh, calculating the power the, the power uh, is this is the actual power which will be dissipated in the circuit uh, which is uh, er into ir okay so you get an uh, 47 uh, that is the voltage across the resistance is we computed as 95.6 and the current is 4.78 you get now if you multiply the current uh, with el okay you get uh, vr this is an uh, this is the uh, VAR. So, this power is not actually uh, uh, consumed. That, that is a power which keeps uh, swinging uh, from the resistors into the source and it does not get dissipated as heat. So, this is this is that uh, uh, out of phase component of the power which is uh, known as uh, uh, VAR. So, uh, you have uh, three, that is obtained by multiplying the uh, current and uh, voltage in the uh, across the uh, inductor and the uh, current through the inductor actually they are out of phase by 90 degrees so if you try to find the true power it will be zero so uh, we are not uh, multiplying the um, uh, cos 90 uh, factor out here so we just get uh, without that what we get is known as the vr and that uh, total power is just the uh, 120 into the total current which is being and so again if you take the vector sum of these two uh, 457 and 345 uh, that is a root of 457 square uh, plus 345 square then you get you know, this, this is the total power or you can uh, simply obtain it by multiplying 120 into the total current okay so uh, this is how we go about computing the uh, various uh, parameters of this uh, circuit uh, so uh, like uh, we did for the uh, DC uh, analysis uh, where we applied Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, nodal and mesh analysis, superposition and source transformation theorems. All these are equally applicable to AC circuits. Okay. Uh, uh, on, but you can't have uh, these things applied uh, if there are nonlinear elements uh, e even in the AC circuits. Okay. Uh, that means if you have a diode or a BJT, uh, then these theorems are not applicable. Okay. We can apply as long as it is only uh, pure RLC okay and voltage sources and current sources on these kind of things so only linear element as long as there are only linear elements in the circuits so these theorems are equally applicable to ac circuits like it was applicable in the dc circuit so we can uh, apply these theorems in for ac circuits also uh, so we'll take an uh, example so things will be uh, more clear uh, so here this i uh, it is an uh, independent source is given by an uh, 33 and then the phase angle is given we got to find the thevenin uh, equivalent circuit to the uh, left of the ter uh, terminals in uh, x and y okay uh, that means this is also on, uh, not a load resistance this entire thing is uh, 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 you know th these are all in the uh, related with the uh, source so we need to uh, we need to uh, make an equivalent circuit encompassing everything okay uh, so there is it, it this is not uh, rl mind you okay so uh, so sometimes you know, in the circuits it some rl will be given and then you will be told to find an equivalent circuit so in that case that rl uh, should not be included uh, while computing the uh, open circuit voltage and thevenin resistance in this case there is no rl okay it, it is given everything to the left of the circuit uh, is uh, we need to find out an equivalent circuit for it uh, so so the best way uh, to this we need to make it an a parallel of all these things right so it, it will become an uh, so to find out the thevenin uh, resistance we need to remove this so this will become an open circuit so this all thing will become uh, in, in parallel okay uh, so uh, in parallel to do that an uh, easier method is to find out the uh, impedance and then uh, add them up so uh, uh, 1 by 5j will give you a uh, minus j 0 0.2 uh, on and this is a uh, mi minus 1 by j 10 which it will give you uh, there, there has to be a 1 minus out here j 0.1 uh, similarly, uh, now this is an uh, 50. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, J J5. Okay. 
yeah yeah this is okay this, this minus and uh, minus gets cancelled right uh, you, when you're taking it to the numerator so uh, you understand now right this is j so you ma uh, mul um, uh, you multiply j in the numerator and so j square becomes minus one so that is how you get a uh, minus j out here uh, similarly here also you multiply uh, j in the numerator and the denominator so uh, j square will become minus one so the already there is a minus one so that becomes a uh, plus out here uh, and 1 by 15 is uh, no, 0 0.06 so then uh, and then uh, this is uh, 5 plus no, uh, j uh, so you need you you have to uh, so uh, this is what uh, instead of doing this you can uh, straight away uh, you can do that also by by taking multiplying with the conjugate of this in the numerator and the denominator right so uh, if you uh, multiply it with the conjugate it will become uh, 5 minus j uh, uh, 8.66 and then a root of uh, uh, 5 square plus uh, 8.66 square so uh, now once you do that you will get these values okay uh, now the y uh, uh, equivalent okay uh, will be uh, sum of all these uh, th this plus this plus this uh, plus this so you you will get the y equivalent that is the total impedance offered by uh, total admittance offered so to find out the uh, uh, impedance you take inverse of that right so you take an inverse so this is an easier method to so first you you convert all these things into uh, admittance and then uh, each of the components into admittance and uh, just add them up and then take the inverse of that you will get the uh, impedance so once you have got the impedance uh, to find out this is the impedance this is the feminine impedance right and to find out what is the open circuit voltage so i into r okay so uh, i into an uh, z in or i divided by y equal it whatever whichever way we call it so we get the open circuit voltage so uh, finally uh, we can Yeah, uh, finally, uh, we can uh, represent this circuit like this. This is the Thevenin open circuit voltage and this is the uh, Thevenin uh, equivalent uh, resistance. So, uh, this is how uh, Thevenin circuit, the way we did it for DC, in a very, very similar manner, uh, it can be uh, done out here. Okay, uh, so uh, one assumption what we are doing it, that this, this whole thing is an, uh, for a uh, specific frequency okay because if the frequency changes all these values of the uh, inductance and the uh, capacitance changes so uh, whatever analysis is uh, we are assuming that the frequency uh, is constant and for we are doing it for a one particular frequency okay uh, uh, now this is again uh, one more problem in which we are trying to find out uh, the uh, current through the 10 ohm resistor using Thevenin's theorem. See, uh, in this case, now we need to consider this 10 ohms as a load resistor. So, when we are uh, finding out uh, Thevenin's uh, equivalent, uh, right, when, whenever we do, so we need to consider this as, as an uh, uh, external resistance, as a load resistance, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, uh, um, it, it is pretty simple by just by visual inspection, you, you can see that this is minus 10J and uh, plus 10J, right? So, these these are going to get cancelled with each other. Uh, so, the, so the, they are not going to uh, remain there. So, the total uh, current which is going to uh, on a, uh, flow, uh, okay, uh, uh, what is the current which is going to flow here? It, it is going to be uh, 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 this... Uh, 100 divided by this pl plus this right so you can straight away compute the uh, value of the uh, current which is uh, flowing into this uh, 10 ohm uh, without uh, making a Thevenin equivalent also here in this case okay uh, the Thevenin equivalent is just uh, you just uh, remove these two things out here okay uh, but does it mean that there will be uh, no current flowing in these two uh, components uh, anybody No, sir. There will be some current flowing? No, there will be some current flowing actually, right? Uh, why should there be a current be flowing in this, uh, these two if they are cancelling each other? Uh, see, there will be some voltage across 10 ohms, right? Okay, so, uh, so there will be a voltage across these 10 ohms. So, there will be some currents which are flowing. Only thing is, these currents uh, will be uh, in out of phase with each other that is why they cancel each other and the net current is not uh, reflected across this 
uh, 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 3 plus J4 or ten ohm, but still there is a uh, current. So these kinds of an uh, uh, there will be kind of uh, or you can call it an oscillation. There will be some energy transfer between the inductor and the capacitor. Okay, which is not going to affect the overall circuit because there will be a definite voltage across the ten ohms, and because of that there will be only the the currents flowing in these two branches will be 180 degree out of phase with each other, which will cancel each other. Uh, when I say currents flowing will be out of each other, what happens is this capacitor will <coughs> get charged and it will keep getting uh, uh, discharged in a, uh, as the sinusoidal goes. So, whatever is the charge, in a, uh, when it gets discharged, that amount of current which uh, the charge which gets in a stored in the capacitor gets discharged through this uh, inductor. Again, it gets charged. So, the, so these are very much uh, in a part of the uh, circuit. Okay, And the currents in these uh, will be uh, um, higher than this current okay that we learnt in the theory uh, that is known as the uh, magnification factor so if a current i is flowing in uh, 10 ohms resistor uh, q into i will be the current which is flowing here and q into i will be the current which will be uh, flowing in this there will be uh, q into minus i and q into plus i okay so they get uh, uh, cancelled with each other so there will be some currents which will be uh, flowing in these uh, rl so uh, these are some of the concepts you need to uh, understand okay uh, so here uh, now the uh, uh, this is like you know, finding out the uh, thevenin uh, uh, equivalent uh, resistance so 3 plus j because the, this minus j and plus j they get cancelled so uh, z in is 3 plus uh, j4 uh, this is the one mm, and the open circuit uh, uh, voltage will be uh, right so uh, uh, it is uh, uh, 3 plus j plus uh, uh, 10 right so uh, the current current which is there and and the open circuit voltage what is the open circuit voltage in this case uh, because uh, these are going to cancel out an, uh, each other and and there is uh, the total open circuit voltage is the total applied voltage because there is no current now available going that load resistance we have uh, removed hence uh, 100 volt whatever was the applied voltage that is the open circuit voltage out here so the thevenin voltage is uh, 100 volts okay uh, is it understood why the thevenin voltage will be 100 volts yeah abhinav yeah gagan is it understood the, the thevenin voltage will be 100 volt out here because this is the load resistance so we are uh, looking at uh, from here so the, uh, the, these impedances are can, going to cancel each other so there is no net current so when this 10 ohm is not current uh, connected these are going to cancel each other so there is no net current in 3 plus j4 and hence the thevenin voltage will be uh, the total uh, 100 volt uh, is the the source voltage is available as the thevenin voltage so uh, so to find out the current it will be a uh, source voltage uh, divided by thevenin resistance plus, plus the load resistance so this is the 10 is the load resistance so you get the uh, total uh, current which is available here okay uh, so uh, now there is one more problem out here now this is based on uh, Norton's theorem so we need to find out what is the uh, current here okay now uh, since it is given I0 here so we have to assume this is going to be the this 20 ohm and J15 inductor which is connected in series is the load resistor so we need to find out what is the current which is going to uh, flow into, into this okay uh, so the first is uh, to find out what is the impedance to find out the uh, impedance we know uh, we remove that uh, load resistance so between a and b it is open and now we are looking into the circuit from here right and then if you see the this is the current source so we have uh, left it open and this is the voltage source so we have uh, shorted it so uh, if you do that then if you see this a ohm and this capacitor this resistance and inductor they all have got uh, shorted here because this has been replaced this voltage source has been replaced by a short circuit so that has gone uh, okay that that this entire thing uh, becomes zero impedance now the only thing which is left is phi so if you see the uh, Norton's impedance or it, it, it's same as the thevenin impedance for this circuit is only uh, 5 ohms okay this is the only uh, resistance which remains in the circuit so that is going to be and, and hence the Norton resistance is an, uh, 5 ohms uh, now uh, now to find out uh, what is going to be the <coughs> uh, short circuit current now to, to find out the short circuit current so we have to short these these two terminals so this is uh, shorted out here right so they have been removed so now uh, now there is one current source there is one uh, voltage source 
so we have to uh, so if you see uh, we need to use one uh, super mesh also out here uh, uh, because there is a current source available between uh, two uh, meshes so in this uh, we have learned that in in our uh, dc uh, circuits also so we have to use a uh, super mesh so first this using this and uh, a small mesh out here for mesh one i can write an equation and this is 40 j which is the power supply this 8 uh, minus 2j into i1 so this is the current which is flowing in this it is i1 minus i2 <coughs> so uh, uh, and then you have an, uh, uh, this is written as an, uh, uh, 18 and this is sum of these two uh, right and 8 and 10 okay that's why it's written as uh, 18 out here uh, so uh, and then uh, into i1 so this is the current which is flowing here into i1 okay uh, this is again and a minus 2j uh, and and a plus uh, uh, 4j so it becomes an a 2j whereas i2 is in the opposite direction uh, out here so you have an one uh, minus out here and and, and it is only through these two components so you write uh, these values okay so uh, and then you have uh, i3 also in these components in the opposite direction so you have a negative sign so you, this is just uh, normal like we did for the dc circuits you write one mesh equation and then you write a uh, super mesh okay it, it is written in, in this way or you can take it this entire uh, loop also whichever is in a comfortable so uh, we take uh, 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 this this uh, this super loop is being considered in this problem so uh, you you write one more equation and the third equation is uh, based to uh, relate these uh, individual loops uh, currents with the current source so you, you in this case you see this current is flowing up so you have an uh, i2 and this current is an uh, flowing in again in the clockwise direction uh, so you you can write an uh, i3 is, is the uh, sum of i2 plus an uh, this 3 ampere currents right so you can uh, write this equation so once that is done so you now you have uh, three equations and three variables so you can uh, compute the value of the uh, i3 is in so if you uh, i3 is in so once you have three equations you solve the simultaneous equations to get the value of um, in okay so this is how uh, we do uh, analysis of ac circuits using norton's theorem right okay uh, now once that uh, not an equivalent is drawn here then you can uh, uh, put back the load which we had in this we had uh, removed right uh, 20 we had this was the load so you put back that uh, uh, load out here and then uh, we know this is the uh, not and uh, current now to find out uh, you know uh, the current which is going to uh, flow here so we know the uh, current division rule right this this current uh, into 5 uh, divided by some of these two impedances 5 uh, plus 20 plus j15 right this is the current like you have a voltage division rule uh, similarly we have a current division rule so this is the total current uh, multiplied by uh, uh, 5 because the greater this resistance more current will flow in this branch okay that's why that comes in the numerator so 5 uh, divided by the total uh, impedance right uh, the sum of these two impedances so that is how you get that uh, total current in this case so okay uh, uh, this is uh, one more circuit where uh, we need to find out an uh, vb using a uh, superposition theorem and the value of the current is also uh, given here the value of the voltage is also given here now now so we have to find out what is the voltage and a uh, vb uh, with uh, vb with respect to the ground using a uh, superposition theorem so in so first thing is uh, uh, this is uh, in superposition theorem we are going to uh, just consider the voltage source so we have uh, removed this current source this, this becomes an uh, open circuit okay uh, once this is an open circuit uh, what is the voltage here so th these these are going to be in uh, parallel to each other so we uh, find out an uh, uh, 556 uh, kilo and, and a minus 10j so that so we are going to find out the parallel equivalent of these two okay so that comes out to be 48886 uh, 48886 right so once that is known we can we can use the uh, uh, voltage division rule right so this is parallel out here so that uh, that parallel resistance uh, into the voltage uh, divided by the sum of this uh, 27k and this uh, equivalent resistance out here so we can use the voltage division rule and get the uh, voltage across this uh, b 
okay so uh, this is how uh, we compute the now we need to find out uh, again the voltage uh, because of this source now we have first to find out first what we did is we found out the voltage because of only this source out here and because we are going to use superposition now in the in the second case we not we need to uh, remove this source okay now uh, to remove this source uh, we know for voltage sources we do a uh, short this uh, we need to short this circuit so once we uh, short this circuit if you see these these three resistances uh, this resistance this capacitor and they all become in parallel uh, so and, and there is a current flowing so to find out what is the voltage all that we need to do is uh, take the parallel combination of these three uh, elements uh, and that multiply it with with the uh, current okay so z total is an, uh, like an, a parallel of these three uh, you take the parallel uh, <coughs> z total is computed by taking parallel of these three uh, components so you get an z total and then multiply it with the uh, i you get the voltage uh, vb now uh, it's superposition theorem so what we got uh, in the last uh, uh, on a slide where we computed the voltage because of uh, merely the voltage source uh, that is this and now uh, the voltage which we obtained because uh, just because of the current source that is obtained here so you do it uh, you take an algebraic sum of both these uh, voltages so you get the total voltage so this is how we can uh, use the superposition theorem also in ac circuits okay uh, now here uh, there is uh, 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 this is an RLC circuit which amplitudes of uh, VR and uh, uh, VL and this is given out here. Okay, the voltages across these three components are given, uh, and the total current which is an, uh, flowing in this circuit. Okay, a max current is given as 5 ampere and the frequency is uh, given. So uh, we need to find the uh, device properties, find out the value of RLC and also the uh, E max uh, of the AC source. Okay, so uh, these are the, uh, 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 this is the uh, voltage which is being applied. Uh, so uh, seeing this circuit, can you, uh, can anybody guess what will be the voltage across uh, E max? It's uh, pretty simple. Anybody? Sir, 100? No. It will be merely uh, 50, correct? Because the voltage, if you see, uh, in the in, like in the uh, last case, okay, uh, the currents were getting cancelled. This is a series uh, no, a circuit uh, in which the same current is flowing in this circuit. So the voltage across the capacitor, uh, the, the voltage across the resistor will be in phase with that of the current. Uh, whereas the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the inductor uh, will be uh, no, 90 degree leading and lagging. So those two voltages will uh, cancel out each other. Okay, uh, so E max in fact will be uh, 50 volt volt in, in this particular uh, uh, case. Okay, uh, is it understood? Does it? Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, so uh, now if we, we can find out uh, what is XR, which will 50 divided by 5. Uh, XC uh, is 25 divided by, because those voltages are given, XL is given here, right? Uh, XL 25 divided by 5. So we get these values and the frequency is given. So uh, we uh, so uh, L uh, uh, XL is L, o L omega or L into 2 pi F. Uh, uh, omega is given here. So it is uh, L omega. So 5 uh, divided by 2 is 2.5. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, capacitance is an, uh, 1 by C omega is XC. Right. So with that, uh, you you can compute the value of C, which will come out to be 0 0.1. Uh, X is 1 by C omega. This is L omega. So omega is given here. So we can compute the values of these three. Right. Uh, and uh, the expression for you know, uh, uh, EMF. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. Yeah, uh, so uh, we can, uh, the, the, the E max is the vector sum of all these three voltages, since they are going to be out of phase with each other, uh, they, they are going to cancel out uh, no? and then the remaining uh, uh, voltage out here uh, will be just the voltage which is available across the resistance. So uh, E max out here will be uh, 50. Okay. So uh, E max doesn't mean the uh, max voltage out here. Okay, it, it is just an uh, if this is RMS and this is also RMS. Okay, if 50 uh, volt is the RMS voltage across R, then this E max is the RMS voltage out here. Okay, uh, so uh, we'll take on uh, one more problem out here uh, in which 
a 50 ohm uh, resistor, 20 milli ohm uh, inductor and a 5 microfarad capacitor all co connected in parallel to a uh, 50 volt 100 hertz supply. So, this is connected in parallel. Calculate the uh, total current drawn from the supply and current for each branch. Okay. Uh, so, uh, total current and also the uh, current from each uh, branch. So, uh, so first since the uh, frequency is uh, given out here uh, and the value of the capacitance and inductor is given, we have we can find out the inductive reactance L omega and capacitive reactance 1 by C omega. If these are, so total uh, impedance will be uh, again uh, 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 since they are in parallel, we need to use this formula. So, once we do, we get the uh, total impedance out here, right. It is since it is parallel 1 by r square plus 1 by x e minus 1 by. So, this we have seen in the theory class. So, this is how we compute the uh, total uh, impedance. Uh, and then the components across e, uh, the currents in each of them, uh, we can simply because the voltage is constant across all the three. So, voltage divided by resistance, voltage divided by a, a, another uh, 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 inductive reactants and capacitive reactants will give the uh, three components of the currents. Okay. Now, these three uh, components, uh, they are going to be, uh, uh, these two components are going to be uh, out of phase with uh, each other, right. Okay. And, and in this case, if you see uh, these two currents, um, they are not uh, equal in magnitude, so they do not uh, cancel out. In the last example there we saw, they are going to cancel out. In this case, they are not going to uh, cancel out each other because the, the they are not at uh, resonance with each other for this particular frequency. So they, they so you have to you can find out the total current uh, will be some total of the uh, current which is flowing in the resistance uh, and also the net current uh, because uh, no, difference in these uh, two uh, currents which is flowing okay which are out of in phase. So you, you use the uh, this formula of uh, I square plus I L minus I C square. Okay, and since an uh, IL is uh, greater than IC in this case, so the net current is also going to uh, lag the applied voltage. If, if the had the capacitance current been uh, greater than the inductor current, then the net current which is being drawn from the source will be uh, leading the voltage by uh, that uh, leading the voltage. In this case, since the, the current across the inductor is greater than IC. So, then uh, that means the current is going to uh, lag. Okay. So, now we can compute uh, uh, that also. Uh, so, uh, this is the uh, triangle. So, this is I R, uh, this is I L, okay, which is greater than I C here. So, uh, now you take an uh, I L minus I C okay, and then we do the vector sum of uh, I R and I L minus I C. So, you get. So, this is the uh, angle which you get. Okay, this angle is uh, nothing but uh, no, uh, IL minus IC uh, cos of uh, 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 IR by uh, uh, IL minus IC. Okay, so that that you that you will get as 75.3. So that angle. So this is how, uh, in case you are asked to uh, draw a uh, vector uh, current triangle, then this is how uh, we draw the. Uh, current triangle. Okay, uh, you, you could be asked to draw a voltage triangle also. So, or you could uh, even you can draw a uh, power triangle also. So, you should know on how to draw these uh, uh, various uh, triangles: current uh, triangle, voltage triangle, uh, and the uh, power triangle. Okay, uh, this is uh, one more example. Uh, so, uh, here again you have an uh, an RLC connected in uh, parallel. Uh, now, we need to uh, find out, calculate the resonant frequency, uh, quality factor, uh, bandwidth and the uh, current at resonance and the current magnification. So, these are the things which we need to uh, find. So, uh, resonance frequencies we know uh, 1 by uh, uh, 2 pi root L c, okay. omega is equal to 1 by root c, um, uh, uh, root L c or um, f resonance is 1 by 2 pi a root LC. So, we can find out what is the resonant frequency. So, now what is the uh, inductive uh, no, reactance at resonance? Okay, it will be uh, an, uh, 2 pi f uh, L. So, 40.8 and uh, this also the, the um, capacitive reactance also will be the uh, same. Um, same because okay. they are going to uh, cancel out each other. So, we are not uh, computing that because that is not uh, required out here uh, because it, it will be uh, no, no, 40.8 J and 40.8 and uh, uh, minus j. So, they are going to uh, cancel out each other. So, the quality factor is known as an r divided by this is given by r divided by xl. 
So, the value of uh, resistance is given 60 uh, by uh, Excel. So, you, you get the quality factor. Okay. Now, quality factor in the theory classes we uh, discuss, uh, it gives the uh, sharpness of this uh, curve, right? So, the, so the bandwidth is this. This is the bandwidth where uh, the total magnitude falls by 1 by root 2. Okay, because the power falls by uh, half uh, uh, in these frequencies. So, uh, power is an uh, I square R. So, that is why uh, when we plot I, we, we call it I by root 2 times when the magnitude of the current falls by I by root 2. So, those are the two frequencies which will, which will uh, define the bandwidth of this particular circuit of any circuit in fact. So, this is the bandwidth and now if you see from the center frequency omega wind will be a uh, half bandwidth below and the uh, higher frequency will be uh, half bandwidth then uh, 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 higher from the center frequency. So, once the bandwidth is calculated and uh, f lower and half uh, f uh, higher can be upper and lower 3 dB frequencies can be computed by using uh, these two formulas where from the resonant frequency you subtract half bandwidth and from the resonant frequency you add half bandwidth. So, you will get f lower and uh, f uh, 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 upper uh, upper 3 dB and lower 3 dB uh, frequencies. Okay. Mm, uh, and then uh, you can also uh, find out the total uh, 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 current in this case. Since uh, here we are talking again about the uh, resonant uh, uh, frequency, that is why the total current will be uh, uh, will be the current which is flowing in the resistance because these two currents are going to cancel out each other. So, since it is a resonant circuit unlike in the previous circuit, here we are talking about a resonant circuit. So, the, the total current will be V divided by R 1.6 amperes okay. and the magnification factor is given by Q into I t that is 2.45. Okay. So, what is this magnification factor? So, that is the current which is going to flow into the inductor and capacitor that is larger than the current which is flowing in this uh, <coughs> excuse me in this resistor. Okay. So it, it is an a magnified Q times. So, now Q is the quality factor. So, that is another definition of Q. So, Q magnified at resonance so uh, Q is going to uh, 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 Q is going to uh, magnify the current. Uh, by the, the is the factor by which the current gets magnified in in l and c so it is 2.45 so uh, if you see uh, uh, now uh, these currents are flowing in these two branches also but it is not getting uh, reflected in the total current because they are uh, out of phase with each other okay so you can uh, verify that in, uh, the current going through the inductor is also 100 divided by now this which comes out to be 2.45 right so this is 2.45 this also comes out to be 2.45 same the current come going through the inductor also if you uh, if you compute the current which is going through the capacitor also you will get it as uh, 2.45 only thing they oppose each other and cancel each other okay uh, so another two problems we have today uh, so, uh, this is a parallel RLC circuit 16 ohms, 8 ohms and 20 ohms with a 120 power supply. What are the uh, following values like current through the inductor? Okay, So, this is a uh, straightforward. Uh, so, you can do these uh, computations in your own uh, time and verify the uh, results and practice it for your exams. Okay. So, I L is V L by X L, uh, I C is V X by uh, X uh, C. So, here it is given in ohms. So, uh, uh, do not further multiply it with by the frequency and things like that. Okay. Uh, as if the values of the inductor is given as ohms. Okay, impedance, impedance is given as ohms that means it is already multiplied by 2 pi f. So, the Henry has got converted into ohms. Okay. So, you do not further multiply it with the 2 pi f. Uh, okay. Similarly, 20 ohms is the impedance of the capacitor. Okay. That means it is already 1 by c omega. Okay. So, you can uh, straight away uh, uh, use the value of an uh, x c as uh, 20. Okay. And then the next net uh, reactive uh, current will be so uh, x uh, l uh, il minus ic and and then the total current will be so these are the uh, straightforward uh, formulas only things in these kind of problems which you need to uh, remember is if it is given in ohms uh, don't multiply it with frequency once again so that care needs to be uh, taken okay so uh, this is uh, uh, i think uh, okay we have uh, one more problem so this is the 10th uh, problem uh, in which the current uh, flowing is given as 150 amperes and the current through inductor is also given as an 100 milliampere. Uh, the total voltage is not given which we need to uh, compute. 
uh, and the current going through the 100 ohm is also not given right uh, so i r you can use uh, root of i square minus i l square right so this is the uh, formula which can because uh, i i r square root of i r square plus uh, uh, i l square will give total i so we can use that formula to obtain the uh, current which is flowing through the resistance once that current flowing through the resistance is uh, known we can find out what is the voltage okay the, the voltage across the resistance that will be the same as the voltage which is being applied in this case and same voltage will be applied available across l also so ir you say you just do uh, ir so we get a, a voltage okay uh, now the value of the inductance is not given here so to uh, find out what is the so uh, value of the inductance since this voltage is known voltage divided by the current 100 milliampere which is flowing in the inductor uh, will give the uh, impedance you know uh, xl so once xl is given by xl divided by 2 pi f will give l and, and f is given as 50 hertz so this is how uh, we compute the values of uh, voltage and the value of l uh, in this particular problem okay uh, here again this is a uh, similar uh, problem in which you have an RLC connected in uh, series uh, here the values are uh, given of L and C in Henry and an microfarad we need to uh, find out the uh, total applied voltage okay uh, now for in this particular case uh, since L and C are given is Henry and microfarad we need to uh, know the frequency so that frequency is given as uh, 60 Hertz so since uh, that 60 Hertz is given now we can compute the value of xl and xc by uh, 2 pi f l and 1 by c omega so xl and xc and then we can compute that uh, total impedance and once the total impedance is uh, uh, computed we can apply find out what is the total voltage because the total current is given as 1.8 ampere so if you multiply it uh, with the uh, total current you will find out we can get the uh, total voltage which is um, applied from the uh, source okay so with that we uh, come to end of this tutorial uh, thanks a lot